Okay, this one says peg B on a gear slides freely along the slot in link AB. If the gear's center O moves uh, with the velocity acceleration shown, determine the angular velocity acceleration of the link at this instant. Okay, so what is going to give you a hint on what we need to do for this problem? One thing that I see is the slot, right? Is the distance between A and B staying constant? The distance between A and B is not staying constant. What we might want to do is set up a coordinate axis system at point A, which we'll call x prime and y prime, that rotates with that bar. Why would we do that? Because then we would be able to put in the fact that we know how B is moving in relationship to x prime and y prime. That's something we know. We need to be able to use that information. Now, are we given a magnitude of how fast B is moving towards A? No. But we know the direction. And you have to remember that direction is just as important as magnitude. Vectors have two pieces of information. If you know one of them, you want to use it. So go ahead and see if you can get this one started. See if you can get a plan with people at your table. And I'll come around and answer questions. Ready for questions, so hit me when you got them. The long one. <laughs> yes, you know it from <laughs> from uh, Monday. Yeah, let's 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 write it. Acceleration of B equals acceleration of O plus. No, it's longer. Alpha cross position of B with respect to O minus omega squared. Where's oh A? 
Yes, that would be one good way to do it. So start here, get omega. Once we have omega, go here. Yeah, well, basically, we need to would trace through this. And what we're really trying to find is angular velocity and acceleration of the link. So what we really want to find is stuff about a, b. But we, we know the velocity. We know what's happening at a, which is nothing. But we don't really know anything about what's happening at b. So if we ignore a, b for a minute, concentrate on the wheel. And that's an easier equation, right? That equation, you, there's no sliding. So concentrate on the wheel and see if you can get everything you need to know about B. Once you know everything you need to know about B, then you have you can relate A and B together. Any questions over here? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. The reason that your office was so close to the wheel is to just focus on the wheel, right? Yeah, that's right. So Basically, we know something about A. We know the acceleration of A and the velocity of A. But we don't know anything about B, except for it's going to have a relatively linear path between A and B. That's the only thing we know. There's a slot. It must move along the slot. So what I'm saying is if we transport ourselves onto the bar, onto bar AB, and you're A and you're staring at B, what does B look like it's doing? You're on the bar rotating with the bar. So you know earlier we had a problem where we had like A, B, and C. How is this different? Because the distance between A and B is changing. That's how it's different. And what that means is you need a rotating coordinate axis system. Because we want to be able to capture the information on this slide. And the information we have is that if I'm standing at A, and I'm staring at B, and I'm rotating with the bar, it's just going to look like B is coming directly towards me. How do we put that in an equation? I'm, I'm at A. I'm staring at B. And I'm rotating with the bar. It looks like it's just coming directly towards me, right? In that frame of reference. So that's what we need to capture in equations. How to put that in a mathematical equation? Sorry. You got any questions? I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? Yes. Well, th this is uh, what, I, what I've talked about a few times in class. It turns out to be your choice. So I, I get what you're saying. When I'm looking at this, it's going to be rotating the negative k. I agree with that. There's two ways to, to work with that in your work. You can either put in negative alpha k and then expect to get a positive answer. I find students get confused with that method. Just put in regular k and then translate the answer? Yeah, if you put in alpha k, then when you solve for alpha, you get a negative alpha, which is what you would expect. Okay. 
Does that make sense? Right. That is less confusing because then you don't have to remember that you put a negative in before. You tell me. It's one of your unknowns. It's one of your unknowns. It's one of your unknowns. But B, B, C is, is known. Is known, yeah. Which is the velocity? The velocity of point B, which would be right here. So it's totally known. This one is totally known. This one is zero, so it is also totally known. So those two are known. You can plug them in, right? This is unknown. It's one of the things we want to solve for. The velocity of b with respect to a shouldn't be in the equation. Position. OK, so this is known, this is known, right? This one is going to be an unknown. Now you have two unknowns, out, uh, omega and velocity b with respect to a. Those two unknowns are what you solve for in your i and j equations. No. You can solve for VB. Solving for VB is actually quite simple. Where's your instantaneous center of zero velocity? OK, so this is your R, right? So VB is just going to be uh, omega R. How do you find omega? Well, you know that uh, velocity is 3, and that's just going to be omega times 0.15. Sure it is. You just haven't expanded it. This velocity of b with respect to o is going to turn into uh, omega, cro omega r. Omega. omega cross r. Since I don't know omega, so it, it doesn't matter. Sure it does. But yeah. I don't know omega. That's OK. It's one of your unknowns. So there will be three unknowns if I, if no, I there are two unknowns in this problem, and you have two equations. So you solve it fully. Well, you're, you're trying to solve the entire problem at once. Solve two problems. The first problem, forget about AB. Pretend like it doesn't exist and find the velocity of B. You can solve that entire problem. Now you have the velocity of B, the full velocity. It doesn't have an omega in it. You know a number. You know a vector. You, then you plug that vector in here. Does that make sense? Separate it out. How are we doing? Good. It's not very enthusiastic, but I'll take it. <laughs> Come on, I need some enthusiasm. Feed me. Feed me enthusiasm. Uh, qu questions that I can answer? Or are you guys trucking along? OK, let's get back together for a minute and see if, we, if we're moving. So what did you guys do first? Drew a picture. Good. We got the picture drawn. Everybody, got, everybody there? OK, what do we do after that? <laughs> you filled in the equation. Could you be a little more specific? <laughs> okay, well, let's talk more conceptually and not so much I plugged in numbers and got a wrong answer. Uh, what, what was your path? <laughs> okay, so let, let's make sure everybody's on, on that page. Basically, what what Cameron's saying is that I'm going to completely ignore AB for now because we need to know more to find AB. What do we need to know to find AB? We need to know some stuff about B. Okay. So if you completely ignore AB, pretend like it doesn't exist, you just see a gear problem. 
and that gear is rolling along a fixed rack. And so what Cameron's saying is there's an instantaneous center of zero velocity right here. If there's an instantaneous center of zero velocity right here, what should be the velocity of O? It's going to be omega r, right? Okay. How do I know that? Because the instantaneous center of zero velocity is the point where all other points are rotating about at that instant. So I can draw my radius and my vector, and I can say that's going to be equal to 3 meters per second, which is going to be equal to our omega of the wheel times r, which in this case is 0 0.15 meters. So omega equals 3 divided by 0 0.15 which is what, 20? 20 meters, or 20 uh, radians per second. Good, we got our omega. Um, very similar way to get alpha, right? What do we know about the acceleration of O? Alpha r, exactly. It's going to be linear because O is not going it's going in a straight line, and it's going to be equal to alpha r, which is tangential acceleration to that point. So that's going to be alpha times r. So I can say 1.5 meters per second squared is equal to alpha times r, which is 0 0.15 meters. Divide alpha is going to be equal to 10 radians per second squared. OK, we got some stuff. Now what? Although that sounds fun, what are we trying to find? Acceleration of b, good. So now we're, we're just going to say, I know o now. I know everything I need to know about o. So let's find the velocity acceleration of b. The velocity of b is quite easy, because we know the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So velocity of b is going to be equal to, uh, what's it going to be equal to? Very good. Omega times the position of b with respect to ic, which is going to be equal to 20 radians per second times the position from 0 to b, which would be uh, 0 0.3 meters. So VB is equal to 6 meters per second. OK, and then we're going to do exactly the same thing for acceleration of B. Say so acceleration of B, I'm going to do the vector equation here, is equal to acceleration of O plus alpha crossed with the position of b with respect to o minus omega squared times the position of b with respect to o. Why is it that I can use this shorter equation? A fixed wheel. Yeah, I'm, I'm using a fixed wheel. The distance, very specifically, the distance between o and b, is it changing? No. So I can use this. Otherwise, I'd have to use the longer equation that has the relative velocity in a rotating coordinate axis system. So we're going to get the acceleration of b is equal to acceleration of o, which we already found is, oh, it's given, 1.5 meters per second squared, plus alpha, which we solved for, 10, 10k crossed with position of b with respect to o. 0.15j minus omega squared, 20 squared, times the position of b with respect to o, which would be 0.15j. Yeah, Any questions there? Yeah. Yes, good point. That would be negative 10k because we're looking at the wheel, and the wheel would be rotating this way. Since I used the scalar equation, 
I forgot to check my signs. Both of that omega and alpha should be negative. Good point. So this, these both, you could either write them as negative, or when you put them in, you can do them as negative k. Yeah. I'm sorry, for which one? Or for velocity of D, you know there'd be plenty of radians times 4.5 meters on the length of the radius, or maybe 4.5 radians? Right here. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, there would be. It's the, pos the radius of B with respect to IC, which is a vector that starts from oh. IC and goes to B. That's the position vector. It goes from the instantaneous center to B, which is 0.3. Because it's not spinning about the center. It's spinning about its instantaneous center of zero velocity. OK, so then we get AB, which uh, I got as uh, 3i minus 60j. meters per second squared. OK, so far we've done nothing new. This equation, th what we've done so far is just solving one of the, uh, one of the acceleration equations we already, we already knew. We didn't do any rotating axes. Now what? Yeah. This one? Sure. Yeah, so basically we're looking at the wheel. Which way is it rotating? OK, so I get my, my hand up here. I say this is positive. My fingers curved this way would be positive. It's going this way. Oh, so it's negative. It's rotating this way, right? Yeah, it's rotating around this way. It's rotating like this, which you can tell just by what would happen if you pushed a wheel. You know? So you know it's rotating about that. You notice the velocity and acceleration are both in the same direction. So we know angular acceleration has to be the same direction as angular velocity. And they're both going in the negative k. Yeah. Is what? VB? VB. So you got it as 0 and 6 meters per second. Uh huh. Yes? Very good. So VB as a vector is going to be in the i direction. How do we know that? Because we can write this r vector, which is already there. VB has to be perpendicular to that, pointed in the i direction. So that's going to be VB as a vector is equal to 6 meters per second in the i direction. OK, everybody good? Now is when we have to employ the new stuff we learned. So what I'm going to write right now is I'm going to say, in our traditional xy, what we just learned is that vb equals 6i. And we learned that acceleration of b is equal to 3i minus 6dj. And this is meters per second. This is meters per second squared. For this next part of the problem, I'm going to count those as my givens. I'm going to pretend like I've done no work and I'm starting a brand new problem and these are my givens. What is my new problem? I've got an A and a B and I want to know the angular velocity and acceleration of AB. So I'm supposed to find omega AB, alpha AB. So I'm going to set it up as an entirely new problem. Forget that I've done any work. So what do I do now? Yeah. 6i. This is an i here. 3i minus 60j. 60. 60j. That's just what the math turned out to, to give us. OK. So now what we do is we draw another picture. That picture is going to have just the ab. We, are, we don't care about the gear anymore. We, we got everything we needed out of the gear. The AB, we've got a peg, and we've got a slot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our, my velocity vector on there. This is VB. And the acceleration of, uh, I could put on there as well. We're going to start with velocity. 
Now what? Yeah. What do you think? Okay. Any, any other thoughts? Exactly. That, that's really the only other given we have, right? So, so we know VB. Let's go ahead and write, it, write out the old way. The old way is saying we have a translating and not rotating coordinate axis system at B. We have a translating non-coordinate uh, rotating axis at B. We would end up saying the velocity of A is equal to the velocity of B plus uh, omega crossed position of position of A with respect to B. Okay, so let's say we did this. If we did this, what we're what we're forgetting to take into account is that the position of A with respect to B is not constant. So if we were to go back to the original equation we got this from, that original equation was this. It was the velocity of b plus the velocity of a with respect to b. This velocity of a with respect to b is actually the derivative of the position of a with respect to b, dt. That derivative does not equal omega cross position of a with respect to b if there's sliding involved. That's why we can't use it. If there's not sliding involved, that's the only thing. Then we're looking at pure rotation. In this case, we're not looking at pure rotation. So we need another component to that. And that other component is the sliding. So our, our, our equation is actually a little bit longer. And remember, you can use this second equation in any circumstance, because it takes into account everything that could be happening. And the second equation is that velocity of A equals velocity of B plus uh, capital omega AB crossed with position of A with respect to B plus the relative velocity in the XYZ coordinate axis system. This is the key right here. We want to be able to put in that our velocity, we know the direction of our velocity in our rotating coordinate axis system. What we're actually saying is we have a coordinate axis system, x prime, y prime, that is floating around at b. And it's also rotating with a b. That's what we want to be able to say. OK, so I would actually tilt my coordinate axis system because I think that's just an easier way to do it. Either way is perfectly fine. Uh, and you know what? I think I would change this to be velocity of b with respect to a, because I think it's, um, it's a little easier to look at. The only thing that changes is this r is going to be flipped around. Either way, it would give you the same answer. I just like thinking of my coordinate system right here at a, and I'm going to have it tilted as my x prime and my y prime axis system. And that x is always going to stay aligned with this body as it rotates. And then I'm going to have my global coordinate system, which I'm going to have as a capital x prime and a capital y prime, right on top of it. And those are always going to be in the same location. But they're not always going to be, they're not always going to correlate together. At this instant, they both are pointed the same way. An instant later, x prime, y prime, has moved. Yeah. Yes. And so when you would do that, you would form things in an odd and weird direction with respect to those vertical four points over here. Correct. So our vectors are no longer valid in this new coordinate system. But we have to we can we can make them valid. And how do we make them valid? We say, well, this is i. Let's call this i prime. Actually, I'll call the big one i prime and the little one i double prime. So 
So my I prime is in a different location than my, my I. So all I have to do is I have to say, well, look at VB. VB looks like this. And my I is this way. This is my I prime, right? And my J prime is perpendicular to it. So I want to take and break this up into its two components. Any questions about that? Luckily, we're given an angle. That angle, we're, oh, we're not given an angle. It's 30 degrees. How do I know that? Because I know this distance is <coughs> um, 300 millimeters. So I'm, I'm left with a triangle of 300 millimeters, 600 millimeters. The sine of theta equals 1 half. So theta equals 30. OK, so we have an angle of 30 degrees. And we can plug that in right here. 30 degrees. That's going to mean that this angle right here is 30 degrees. Those are um, opposite exterior angles. No, complementary angles. I, I never remember the names in geometry. but th Those are the same. If you need to prove it to yourself, you can always extend this like that and extend this like this. This angle is the same as the one I drew down here. It's 30 degrees. And obviously, as those open and close, they have to be the same angle. So once I have 30 degrees there, I can say, well, this is 6. This is 6. And this would be 6 cosine 30. This would be 6 sine 30. Make sense? OK, so let's just do velocity. Then I think we're going to need to move on if we, if we uh, <laughs> are going to do everything we, we want to do today. So now what I can do is I can plug that in. I can say my VB is going to be 6 cosine 30 degrees I prime. And that's actually in the positive I. They're both positive. And we're going to add 6 sine 30 degrees J is equal to VA. What's my VA? 0, because A is fixed plus my alpha AB. And this is a good question I had for Will a second ago. When we look at this, AB is going to be rotating in the negative K direction. So we could put in negative alpha or negative omega K if we wanted. But then we have to remember we put that negative sign in there. And I find that a lot of students forget that. So I don't recommend doing it that way. Instead, I recommend just saying it's going to be equal to some omega AB in the K. When I solve for omega, I expect it to be negative. My negative sign is built into my variable. Crossed with the position of B with respect to A. This is where our tilted coordinate system really, really benefits us. The position of B with respect to A is going to be what? Yeah, in this case, it would be negative, right? Because it's the position of B with respect to A, which is a vector that looks like this. And according to my x double prime, it's the opposite direction of x. So it would be negative 0.6 um, meters in the i direction. Then we have to add on to that the relative velocity of uh, b with respect to a. And what do we know about that? What is? the velocity of b with respect to a in the x double prime, y double prime, z double prime coordinate axis system. What's that? Not fixed rotation. It's, it's linear. Very good. You know the direction, and you don't know the magnitude. Just like for our omega, right? Just for our omega, we knew k, but we don't know the magnitude. Same thing here. We know that it, if you're standing at A and you're staring at B and you're rotating with the bar, what does it look like B is doing? It's coming directly at you. Directly at you means straight 
Am I in the I or J direction? I. So I'm going to put my velocity in as the magnitude velocity of B with respect to A, X double prime, Y double prime, Z double prime, times I. Plug that in. Now you can see we have an equation. How many unknowns? Two unknowns. How many equations? Two, so we can solve it. So you see how we had to put that piece of information in there in order to solve this problem? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's a really good point. You don't have to tilt your coordinate system. If you, do, if you don't tilt your coordinate system, this is going to stay as 6i, as it was before. And then this velocity of b with respect to a will have an i and a j component, and so will that one. Either way, we'll get you the same answer. Acceleration. More painful, but the same procedure, right? We know the acceleration of B. We know that the accelerate, the relative acceleration of A, B with respect to A in the X prime, Y prime, Z prime is going to be linear. So we can plug in the direction and solve for it. Okay, I think that's as far as we're going to go on that problem. Hopefully it was helpful. Let's go ahead and take a break. We're going to do groups. And that was, what are we doing with this information? Remember this problem we were solving? I kind of just left it with velocity. And this was one of the answers we are supposed to get, the angular velocity. But, but what about this? Well, the answer is, the next step is to get acceleration, which is this equation down here. And to get acceleration, within that equation, is that relative velocity. right? So you need, yes, you need to solve for that so that you can plug it into here. In this equation, you're going to have two unknowns. Th this is going to be known because you solve for it up here. So your two unknowns are going to be the uh, linear acceleration relative to the x prime, y prime, z prime axis, and the, re the rate of change of omega. Those will be your two unknowns to solve for this one. Does that make sense?